Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanna share a story about how I became a data scientist Google with a GP of 3.09. Some of you might have read that according to HBR Harvard Business Review, that data scientist is considered to be one of the sexiest jobs of the 21st century. Whether you're doing product analytics or building machine learning model or researching state-of-the-art technique involving artificial intelligence, there's no doubt that there's a lot of excitement about the field. And I've been a data scientist for about six years now, and let me share a story about how I went from that 3.09 GPA to getting my first job, to landing a startup job, to landing my dream job at Google, and finally running my own business focused on data science. Let's get started. Before I became a data scientist, I was a student just like some of you. And I remember when I first entered college in Virginia Tech, I was very lost in terms of what I'm going to pursue. Am I going to be a doctor? Am I going to be a lawyer? Or am I going to be a loser? I don't know, but I changed my major so many times. I went from undecided to pursuing creative writing to pursuing psychology. And around that time, I was also minoring in statistics because I learned that grad schools and psychology care about whether you did well in statistics course or not. And it wasn't until a series of events that led me to decide that I want to pursue statistics and become a data scientist. The first event started with the fact that I took the intro to stack course and I learned about hypothesis testing and regression analysis. And I remember being very fascinated by it. The second event was that I learned about Nate Silver and how he used statistical analysis to accurately predict the presidential outcome of 2008 and 2012 elections. And lastly, I watched the movie Moneyball with Brad Pitt, which is about how statistical analysis was used to pick players that are underrated and could lead to the highest winning potential in Major League Baseball. And when I saw this movie, I saw the power of using statistical analysis to make really good decisions. And I knew that that's something I wanted to do. So that's when I changed my major to statistics. So how did I go from a stat major to becoming a data scientist? So I would say, honestly, I got pretty lucky about this. My GPA was 3.09 and it's not the highest GPA. You see, the first two years in college, I slacked off. I was partying. And then the last two years, I really got a grip and I started getting A's and B plus. But it wasn't enough to bring the GPA high. And when I applied to various jobs, I ended up getting rejection saying that my GPA were simply not high enough. But if there's one adage I learned from a mentor of mine in college, is that it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And my mom happened to know a director who works at this large consulting firm in DC called Booz Allen Hamilton. And this company was actively hiring entry-level data scientists. So I applied for the position and then I had a behavior round with some basic technical questions. And then I ended up securing that first job. Now let me share a story about what my first job was like working as a data science consultant in Booz Allen Hamilton based in Washington DC. You see, the thing about Washington DC is that there's a lot of presence of government. And so a lot of the client projects that I ended up working on was related to government. And one of the first projects I worked on was at the US Pentagon where I got a chance to work with the US Marines. And what they wanted to understand was the effect of suicide among the US Marine Force. So I had a chance to look at various Marine attributes from the 1980 and onwards to stuff about their demotion, to marital status, income, age, and various other attributes. And what we wanted to understand was the factors that would contribute to suicide. And one of the particular piece that I was asked to focus on was more about the social network effect of it. So given that a Marine was exposed to a certain number of suicide, how would it affect their psychological state? Now, of course, I cannot provide more information about the outcome of that analysis, but I can tell you one thing. During this project, I had a chance to work on Pandas, Postgres SQL, building SQL Learn model, and building models using H2O. And I also had a chance to work with clients in real life. And this was definitely an eye-opening project for me because it really gave me an exposure in terms of what projects are like in real life setting. Now, during this time, I really wanted to ramp up in data science. I wanted to learn everything there was about it. And so outside of the 40 hour work week, I also spent additional time learning data science on my own. So I picked up books like the Introductory to Statistical Learning and I watched Andrew Ng's Coursera courses on machine learning. And I just tried to read as much as I can. I went on Pandas, SKLearn, SciPy documentations and tried to understand functions and actually test them out. And that full immersion for me, both applying data science in real life, but also learning data science outside of that, the synergy effect helped me build a foundation that was much required later down the road. And the biggest takeaway from this experience that I'd like to share with you 
is that you have to be a sponge. You see, when you are starting out, you're naturally going to meet other people who have much more knowledge than you and who are eager to share knowledge that are helpful in your career. Now, although my first job as a data science consultant in DC was fulfilling, there was always some part of me that knew that I was gonna end up in Silicon Valley at some point. Ever since I watched the movie Social Network and the HBO series Silicon Valley, I always dreamed of becoming a startup founder one day. And that's when I took a leap of faith and decided around 2017, just applied a bunch of companies based in Silicon Valley. And there was one startup that I ended up going interviews with. And this startup was founded by ex-Googlers. And what they focused on was building fraud models for banks and e-commerce. And that was exactly something I wanted to do. So I went on interviews and they had a technical phone screen, a take-home assignment, and on-site with, I believe it was about five rounds. And a lot of them were focused on machine learning, statistics, and coding. I ended up acing the interview. And then in 2018, I moved from my hometown in DC and flew over to Silicon Valley. And that's when I started my first job as a data scientist at a tech company called Simility. And I was really excited about my first startup job. Now I was working 80 hours a week, but I didn't mind it at all because there was something really exciting about working with highly intelligent individuals and working towards a mission. And during this time, I also got an exposure into various tech stack from H2O, Cassandra, Droid, and Kafka. And I learned about how to build a scalable system. And as I worked with the director of data science, he really helped me sharpen quantitative thinking. You see, up until that point, when I was building classification model, I used a default probability of 50% to determine whether a label should be fraud or not. And he helped me understand that you actually want to look at precision and recall to make a decision about what the optimal threshold is going to be. So that's one of many examples where he taught me how to read numbers as a way to make key decisions in machine learning and also data analysis as well. And what really sweetened the deal about this first startup job was that in a matter of few months, the startup ended up getting acquired by a large tech company, PayPal. And the RSUs I owned from this startup ended up becoming stock options, which was actually worth something. And I ended up transitioning as a data scientist Humility to a data scientist at PayPal and got a chance to work at the PayPal campus and work with various data scientists. The biggest takeaway I have from this experience is that you want to use numbers as a way to make key decisions in data analysis and machine learning. You see, as I mentioned before, when I was building classification model up until that job, I was using the default probability of 0 0.50. It wasn't until I worked there, then that's when I realized that actually you want to sort of optimize it based on precision recall and various other factors as well. And that's exactly what I mean. Whether you're using what type of model you're going to use, how you're going to present the numbers to the stakeholder, it really comes out to being able to look at the numbers and be able to interpret it. So when you're doing a data science project, really focus on quantitative thinking. Now onto my next chapter, working at Google. How did I get there? Within about two years of working at the startup slash PayPal, I got an email from a Google recruiter saying that they saw my resume that I had some actually submitted several months back, which I ended up getting rejection right off the bat. But anyway, she pulled up my profile and she liked my background. And around that time, Google's finance was actually trying to build a new data science capability. And so they had a data science manager who used to work at Microsoft and she wanted to talk to me. So I went on the first technical phone screen and this was with a senior data scientist and I had various questions about machine learning and I was asked to solve SQL problem. And I passed the technical phone screen and ended up getting onto on-site. I remember the night before, I was so nervous that I could not sleep. I took 10 milligrams of melatonin and I tried to calm my mind by listening to Eckhart Tolle. But none of that seemed to help because I was just so excited and nervous at the same time. Anyways, I went on site and I took two shots of cappuccino and I had on site runs focused on applied statistics, machine learning, business case, and behavioral. And after the on site, I waited about three weeks and the recruiter reached out to me again saying that, congratulations, here's the offer to work at Google. And at that moment, I almost cried because up until that moment, I always thought that in order to work at a place like Google, you have to be some Ivy League person with a perfect GPA of 4.0. But it really shattered the reality and the expectation that I've always been told, which is that in order to do well in life, you have to get solid grades. But that was actually not the case. So this was an incredible career opportunity for me. And I started working as a finance data scientist at Google in 2019. And when you are on Google campus, it feels like a college campus. I had a chance to ride the Google bicycle. I got free 
food, I used the nap room. There were also gyms and some gyms even had a basketball court. And I used all of these things and I certainly felt like I was a student all over again. And I also got a chance to work on various really cool projects where I was building a forecasting model for one of Google's pillar, which is the network traffic. They wanted to make a five-year projection in terms of what the monthly expense of the network traffic is going to be. And the forecasting algorithm that I ended up using was the Bayesian dynamic linear model. And I used TensorFlow as a way to make this model. And this was also around the time when I learned more about stakeholder management than I had before in any other job. You see, up until that point, I was really focused on cultivating my technical skills. But it wasn't I worked at Google where they had big emphasis on people skills and how you manage stakeholders. And that's when I really learned about how do you set expectations with stakeholders? How do you lead them through a project? And how do you deliver success? And so all of these things put together really helped me become a data scientist that I am today. And the biggest takeaway from this experience is that if you aspire to work at a company like Google and you're worried that you didn't get into top school or you don't have the highest GPA, you don't have to worry about it. As long as you build relevant skill set for the job at Google. So if you want to be a data scientist, work on applied statistics, machine learning, SQL and coding, and you show Googliness, which is basically their work for, are you a people person or not? Then those are the qualities that Google really cares about at the end of the day. So focus on those attributes and who knows, you might also become the next data scientist at Google. Now there's no doubt that Google took care of me really well and I learned so much from this experience. But there was always an itch that I always had and that was becoming my own boss, learning my own business. And like I said, ever since I watched the movie Social Network and HBO series Silicon Valley, I always dreamed of moving to Silicon Valley to start my own startup or business. And around 2021 of last year, I, I felt that I was ready. I had enough skill set in play. I had enough connections to be able to run my own business. And one thing that bothered me a lot was that there were two periods in my life when I went on job hunt for data science. And I saw that there weren't that many quality resources about how to do interview prep for data science roles. And so that's when I decided that, you know what? I think there needs to be a business for this. So I built the website datainterview.com, which is a platform for courses and coaching that can help people prepare for data science interview. And so fast forward today, I've been running this business for almost a year now. I actually moved from San Francisco to New York City, and now here I am running my business full time. And one thing I learned about running my own business is that you have to wear multiple hats. It's almost like you have multiple part-time jobs. One is creating the content for the course. The other one is making YouTube video like this. The other one is various other things like admin, customer support, and so forth. So there's definitely a lot of things that I'm juggling with on a week to week basis. But a lot of the skills that I learned during the first several years of my data science career are helpful in running my own business. It's helpful in a sense that I'm using data as a way to make decisions. I'm looking at what products are selling, what products are not. I'm looking at the retention curve of my YouTube videos. I'm looking at the click-through rate on my Medium articles. I'm looking at the level of engagement on my LinkedIn posts. I'm using data as a way to make better content for marketing and product. And if it wasn't for data science, I don't know whether I would have ended up running my own business, let alone knowing how to make decisions using numbers. And so I'm really glad and thankful with the experience that I had and the things I learned and people that I met along the way. And so the biggest takeaway I have for you is that in college, when I was lost about what I'm going to pursue, a college professor told me that all you need to do is just follow your passion. And that's what I like to encourage you. If you feel lost, if you feel discouraged, follow your passion and that is going to take you somewhere where you want to be. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the story of how I went from that 3.09 somewhat lost, clueless student to eventually working at Google as a data scientist and now running my own business focused on data science. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.